Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Nancy Kwan is a living legend, and through her, Hollywood reached another incredible height. But even though the actress came from wealth, her career wasn't easy, and when she thought she had everything, life came to snatch what gave her joy. Nancy Kwan was too hot to get a job. Anna Mae Wong unlocked the gates of Hollywood for Asian characters, but Nancy Kwan kicked the gates wide open due to her top Hollywood films. The film The World of Susie Wong and The Flower Drum Song, in which the actress played the female lead, reinforced how talented Asian actresses could be. The Flower Drum Song was an all-Asian cast that was groundbreaking in the 1960s. It would be the first time that kind of stuff would happen in Hollywood, and it created the foundation for Asians to get on the screen and dazzle. Without her, the new generation of Asian stars would have struggled and gotten poor roles. But while these films were good for promoting Asian participation in Hollywood, they also had their downsides. The main downside was how they increased the perception of Asian women in a certain way. Although during that time people didn't care much, they were just happy that finally Asians were getting their flowers. Interestingly, the film that helped make Kwan a star was the one that slowly helped nail the coffin of her acting career. The actress missed out on a reducing acting opportunity when she refused to criticise the world of Susie Wong. The actress wasn't about to play politics and turn her back on Stark's Seven Arts Productions, which produced the film. Nancy Kwan wasn't only loyal, she was a hottie too. The actress was described as being alluringly leggy and perfectly formed. Her first two films emphasised her dashing long legs. After all, what is Hollywood without emphasis on sex appeal here and there? So they gave her dresses with slits that allowed the actress's pretty legs to be out there for all to see. But none of those dresses would be on the level of the high-collared Chinese clothing with slits on each side that she wore in 1960, where she graced life's cover. That cover announced to the whole world that the sexy actress had joined the rank of the esteemed celebrities that are sex symbols. The dress she wore became something of a national costume, and still has a place in movies to this day. The dress would become the Susie Wong dress. But she didn't just dictate dresses for people to wear just by wearing them. She also inspired hairstyles. One of the hairstyles that she inspired was a bob hairstyle, the actress had to cut her long flowing hair under the direction of John Krish, director of The Wild Affair, one of the films she starred in. The style Vidal Sassoon, the legendary London hairstylist, came up with became so prominent that it became the Quan or the Quan Cut. The actress is more than just a hottie and a fashion icon. Her beauty has defeated time, and despite her being in her eighties, she looks radiant as always. The actress has revealed that the secret to her eternal beauty isn't cosmetic surgery. What we see is completely natural. Just live a healthy life, you'll be fine, when asked about how she remained quite beautiful in old age. Her healthy routine involved her eating in moderation, and yes, Quan loves meat, although she is careful about the kinds of food that she eats, and despite this, she also exercises a lot. Part of her routine is Tai Chi, which she attends classes for, and yoga. There's nothing exceptional about her routine, no skin care or anything. If there is, she hasn't mentioned them. But it wouldn't be nice if she had any secret that she isn't telling us. Did you know there was a time that this beautiful actress got denied a job because she was too pretty? OK, so it was 1961, her fame was running hot, and she was in the fantasy of many men across the United States and beyond. So the Yorkshire Light Infantry had training in Malaya, which is now part of Malaysia, in 1961. The infantry commanders wanted their men to get used to the Chinese language and how to use chopsticks. The commanders needed a teacher to help teach the men. They wanted a pretty teacher to get more soldiers to attend the training. When Quan saw the posting, she applied and offered her services to the army, saying she was fluent in Chinese, gracious with chopsticks, and loved uniforms. The commanders said no, they wanted a pretty woman, but Quan was too pretty and would end up distracting their soldiers to the point where they wouldn't learn anything. They opted for another woman instead. Well, it's true, as they say, beauty hurts, and it hurt Quan, 
but she didn't need to dwell on that rejection. Another acting job was waiting for her. Apart from her beauty, the actress has a warm and playful character. She loved to crack jokes and also laugh. Would you believe that one of the reasons the actress delayed her marriage was because she didn't want a boring marriage? She wanted a marriage where she and her partner could talk and crack jokes between lovemaking. But her goofy nature didn't mean that people could take advantage of her. Nancy was quite vocal when she needed to be. If something happened that I didn't like, I would open my mouth and say so, she said in an interview. So don't go trying to provoke her or something. She would beat you down with words if she doesn't find it funny. Unfortunately, her career burned out early. Hollywood's nasty typecasting reared its ugly head again. After acting in two sensational films, the actress discovered that Hollywood saw her as an Asian woman and would only cast her as an Asian character. It sucked. For someone who had dropped everything else to become an actress, only getting Asian roles was limiting. However, she acted in The Main Attraction, her third film, where she worked as an Italian circus performer. Ray Stark promised to test the actress with diverse roles throughout her contract with him and his studio. In the film, she acted alongside Pat Boone and was his love interest. She realised she would always be the Asian girl if she didn't take matters into her own hands. So she journeyed the world. How did that work out for her? Stick with us and find out. Nancy Kwon Karshen was always going to be a star. She was born on May 19, 1939 in British Hong Kong. Her father was a wealthy Chinese architect and her mother was a model of English and Scottish heritage. Her parents met when her father was in school, got married and moved to Hong Kong. However, after two years, when she was two years old, her parents divorced, and her mother escaped to England when the war began. Fearing for his family, Nancy's father disguised himself as a labourer, put his children in a basket, and smuggled them out of Hong Kong in the cold winter. The man braved Japanese sentries and dodged them till he got to the western part of China, where he waited out the war. His children, who were used to comfort, had to deal with the hardships of war, but it would soon be over. They holed up in western China for five years, and by this time the war had ended, and the family returned to prosperity. Her father remarried, and the actress continued to enjoy her father's wealth, and would soon be on the path to building her own. Unlike her siblings that wanted to become lawyers and architects, the actress wanted to dance. She wanted to do ballet, and strangely learning Tai Chi was the primary inspiration behind her desire to know how to dance ballet. The actress auditioned at the Royal Ballet School when she was twelve, and they told her to finish school before joining them. Originally, the actress had switched schools from the Catholic Mary Knoll Convent School to the boarding school Kingsmore School in Glossop, England at thirteen. When she was eighteen, she packed her bags and was off to the ballet school in London, where she danced to her heart's content and enrolled in some performing arts subjects. But Quan wouldn't be a dancer even if she didn't know it. The actress, after finishing school, travelled around Europe before returning to Hong Kong to start her ballet school. Then the actress landed a screen test role in a bizarre series of events. Bizarre can't even begin to describe the situation. So Quan saw a Ray Stark ad asking actresses to come and screen test Susie Wong in the world of Susie Wong. Nancy was excited. The audition would be one of the buildings that her father designed. She didn't plan to audition, but wanted to use the opportunity to see her favourite stars. When she got there, the actress was offered the choice of doing the screen test, which was a disaster. Quan was just giggling. The actress didn't even think of the test until Ray Stark told her that he would love to offer her a contract. She wasn't the only person that auditioned, but for some reason she stood out. She gave France Nguyen, the French Vietnamese or Chinese actress that acted as Susie in the stage production, a run for her money. Stark preferred Quan and first had her trained for four weeks with acting teachers. Her second screen test was much better, but it wasn't enough. Stark believed that Nancy would be more accepted by people than any of the actresses that auditioned. So he had her auditioned a third time. Stark wanted the actress to become a more forceful person behind the camera, but it was difficult for the actress, who had been rich and prim all her life, to become a cool girl for the camera. Eventually she passed the screen test and went to learn the acting craft at the Hollywood Studio Club. 
She got a contract out of it too. So Quan followed France Nguyen for the stage production of The World of Susie Wong, where she acted as a bar girl. However, they went for France as Paramount wanted the actress. Stark and William Holden preferred Nancy, but Paramount insisted on France because she was more experienced and known. Nancy was devastated. She wanted to quit before she had even begun. The actress had believed it was her turn to shine. But she didn't mope around for too long. She picked herself up and replaced Nguyen for the stage production. But then she got a call in Toronto a month after Nguyen got the part. The caller was none other than Stark asking Nancy to screen test again for the role. But she was already going to be Susie on stage and she had a contract signed. So Ray Stark came up with a devious plan. He sent a cablegram to the show's producer that the actress's father was sick and she played along. However, the producer was pissed. The show must go on and his lead actress was leaving. He sued her for the contract breach, but it didn't matter to the actress. She was getting an opportunity again and this time she was impressed. And the Susie role in the world of Susie Wong was hers. France Nguyen had parted ways with the film and sexy Nancy would replace her. Did you know Nancy almost got fired from the role? When Nancy got the part, the studio had to do many reshoots, as it had done far with France Nguyen. But Nancy was not quite herself. You see, she had gotten entangled with Marlon Brando, and you know how women that associate with Marlon get. Her relationship with Brando left her erratic, and she had a nervous breakdown. The fact that she had to also be semi-naked in one of the film scenes also left her uncomfortable. She wasn't going to play ball, but she calmed down after Stark talked to her, and from that scene a new sensual goddess was born. She performed impressively in the film, and critics showered her with praise. The actress now drew attention everywhere she went, and wasn't used to this at first. However, she soon got used to it, and soon she was acting in her second film, The Flower Drum Song, which was a musical. She didn't sing in the film, but the dancing, she gave it her all. After her third film, the parts she got were not impressive, so she alternated between Europe and America, trying to get plum rolls on TV and the silver screen. She met Peter Pock, a hotel entrepreneur in the Austrian Alps, while shooting her third film in 1962. They got married and had a son, Bernie, but Nancy's work wouldn't let her spend so much time with her family. Her acting continued to blossom, and she had carved a niche for herself as a comedic actress. According to her, acting in comedies was more difficult than in serious films, as the actress needed to understand the proper timing that would make her work funny. Her marriage to Peter wasn't going to be her happily ever after. In 1968 they divorced, and the actress devoted herself to her career as she met and worked with Bruce Lee for the film The Wrecking Crew. The actress even had an action scene in the movie. It was awesome. She and Lee would remain friends, and she remarried in 1970, but like her first marriage, this one too was doomed to fail. By 1971 they divorced, and soon Quan's career stalled. Her father got sick. Disobeying her agent, the actress flew to Hong Kong to help him recover. Her plan was to remain with her dad for a year, but it turned into seven years. Nancy loved her work, and she wasn't idle in those seven years. She created her own film production studio, Nancy Kwan Films, where she made advertisements for the Southeast Asian market. She also got parts in Southeast Asian films, and it was through one of them that she met Norbert Meisel, a filmmaker who she married in 1976. The actress made a return to America and became a regular on TV series. Then she began to diversify her interests, co-owning a restaurant and also recording audiobooks. She occasionally acted in films and played an important part in Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. The actress wrote, directed and acted in her own film, Loose Women with No Face. She also worked with her son and husband in the feature Rebellious. However, life demanded a price for giving the actress so much. The price was her son, who she lost to AIDS, he got from his girlfriend. Unfortunately, Nancy warned him against the girl, but he wouldn't listen. He was rebellious against his mother, and it cost him his life and his mother her joy. She heavily supported the cause against AIDS and threw herself into her work, hoping never to retire 
till she dies. Get ready to embark on a tantalising quest with our next video. Join us as we delve into the enigmatic world of Nita Naldi and unravel the mystery behind her immense sensual energy. Watch this video now!